Welcome back to Rod's Radios. In my last video you may have seen me tussle with this vintage radio from 1936. It's an RAP model and it gave me a lot of trouble in that I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was wrong with it. I had a very basic circuit diagram which proved to be a little bit inaccurate so I wasn't able to identify some of the correct components and I took it apart, I recapped it Put lots of components into it at the end of which i have a very poor quality am radio because most of the valves three out of the five valves in fact were very low on emission so to replace those three valves if i could get them which i very much doubt would cost a small fortune so i really can't put any more uh, time and labor into this radio which is a shame really because it would have been good to get it back. However, there's very little reception here in Ireland these days on what is an AM radio. It's long wave, medium wave and three short wave bands. So there's very little to receive over here and any reception at all is crackly and noisy anyway because it's coming from at least 100, 150 miles away from the UK at its nearest and anything further than that is virtually impossible to get. In conjunction with the weak emission of the valves, the radio is in pretty poor condition. It's rusty. There's a lot of verdigris, or there was a lot of verdigris inside it. However, I did spend a lot of time on the cabinet, which you may be able to see back here, and the cabinet is looking pretty good. So what to do? I hate to just scrap this completely and write it off as a dead loss. So. I'm going to have to do something with it. Uh, I want to keep that cabinet because it looks really cool. It's different to a lot of the normal radios, uh, vintage radios we see over here from probably the 50s and 60s because it does, does come from 1936. So it's verging on getting on for 90 years old at this stage. So what to do? Hmm. Don't worry, Mr. B. I have a cunning plan to solve the problem. Well, not really a cunning plan, but I'm thinking of modernizing this radio in installing a little radio module, an amplifier module, and replacing the original speaker. I can't use the original speaker because that has a field coil which needed to be fed with a, a high tension or 200 volt DC supply instead of a magnet. So I've salvaged this speaker from another old vintage radio and I'm going to try and fit it into the cabinet. I've already prepared uh, a Perspex or an acrylic frame to help with that. And on top of that, instead of replacing what I found the grid on the radio when I got it, although this is not the original grid. It would have had a cloth grid initially when the radio was made. So I'm thinking of using something like this, which looks a little bit more authentic towards the cloth that would have been on it originally. So we see how that goes. Let's have a closer look at these two modules to see what's involved. This is the AMFM radio module that I picked up from AliExpress. It wasn't very expensive, only a couple of dollars or a couple of euros. And I picked this particular one because it's going to suit what I have in mind. I want to incorporate this into the chassis of the radio, which I'm actually going to strip down to its bare bones and fit this module onto it. And I picked it particularly because it has an analog pot to tune the stations in. And I'm going to try and link it up with the mechanics of the original chassis so that when you turn the tuning knob on the old chassis, on the radio itself, the dial will actually, the dial pointer will sweep across the dial on the front to give it a kind of an authentic look. On top of that, then there are a couple of switches here, an on off switch, which I'll take out and I'll put a separate rotary switch onto the cabinet of the radio and also the AM-FM switch, which I shall separately uh, 
disconnect here and reconnect onto a rotary switch on the cabinet. So the radio module then, the output of this AM or FM, now it is a digital radio, don't forget, but it has the analog tuner, which caught my fancy. And this will be fed into this other module here, which is actually a 30 watt mono amplifier. Again, not that expensive, but it also incorporates a Bluetooth module to allow this radio now to become something a lot more useful. However, to power these two modules, I'm going to have to make a separate power supply because the radio module as bought uses two batteries, in other words, a three volt supply, and the amplifier needs a 12 volt supply at least to give it any sort of warmth. So I'm going to have to design a separate power supply because I want this radio to remain as a mains radio as it would have been originally, even though it's been modernized. This is the circuitry I've drawn out to power the two modules. And the way it works is that mains electricity comes in here at what, 230 volts, and fed through a transformer, the output of which is about 15, 16 volts AC. It's then fed through a bridge rectifier, which gives a, a DC voltage coming out here. And it's initially sm smoothed by a 2000 microfarad capacitor here. And then it's fed into this MOSFET circuit here, a MOSFET transistor. And the effect of this is to multiply the effective capacitance of this capacitor under here by the gain of the transistor. So if this is a thousand microfarads and the gain of this happens to be a hundred, well then this capacitor is in effect putting a hundred thousand microfarads across the DC supply here which should give a very smooth ripple-free DC voltage for the two modules. So after that then it's fed separately to two LM317 regulators, one here which in conjunction with the resistors gives a DC voltage of about 13 volts which is what we need for the amplifier module and separately over here uh, another uh, resistor network here which gives a 3 volt DC supply to feed the radio module. And this is the little transformer that I, I found. I salvaged this from an old printer and conveniently it gives us a 15 volt AC supply which is just what we need. So the next phase was to design this on a, a software package. It's called Easy EDA, it's a free software package. And this allows me to design the layout of the printed circuit board, which when done, it gets sent off to another company called JLC PCB. And within two weeks, this is what came back. This is the printed circuit board, both sides. And you can see the layout of the various components like the bridge rectifier, the capacitors, the regulators, etc. And on this, uh, I'm going to build the circuitry. And hey presto, here it is. So this is the final power supply board and you can see the various components in place now. And in practice, this works out very well. I've tried it on the modules and there's virtually no ripple at all, zero ripple. So I'm very pleased with this. So the next phase of the project is to fit all this gear into the chassis. I have to strip it down first of all and try and figure out how I'm going to mount these modules and the various controls that are going to hopefully make this radio work again. Let's see what happens. I've stripped all the old components out of the underside of the chassis as you can see here and fitted my little power supply board that's going to feed the 12 volt line and the 3 volt line up to the top side of the chassis. And here's the mains power supply to feed that board itself. I think it comes out at around 15, 16 volts AC. And before that, I've fitted a fuse holder here just for safety reasons and a new mains lead, of course. And up near the top, you can see what will be the on off switch. I didn't have a switch on its own, so I've incorporated an unused volume control and just used the switch portion on it. And over here you can see what will be the band switch for 
switching between AM and FM. So at the moment, the wires coming out of the power supply feed up to the top of the chassis. So I'll spin it over and show you what I've done there so far. On the top side of the chassis, you can see that I've also stripped it down to its bare minimal. However, I've left the original tuning capacitor here and taken out the rear por portion of it because what I'm going to do is fit this back in. And as you can see, I have a pulley now on the back section. And this pulley is going to drive a belt coming over here to operate the potentiometer, which in turn will select the channels on the new radio module. Is this matter what? Probably. It's several weeks later now because several things conspired to delay this project. Christmas intervened in the way and I was away for several weeks. But when I started rebuilding this, this is the original AM FM module that I fitted and I made one glaring mistake. It worked for a short while and then it, it broke down and I scratched my head to try and see what was wrong. Was it not matching the amplifier or what was going on? However, I discovered anyway, it was my own stupid mistake. When I was making up the power supply, I omitted to put heat sinks on the voltage regulators and because of the voltage drop across each of them, one has a drop of 17 volts DC down to 12 and the other 17 volts DC down to 3. And of course the voltage regulator started to overheat. In one case it fell out due to the solder melting. But the result was that instead of getting the normal 3 volts to DC to feed this little AM FM module, it was getting the full 17 volts DC. So of course it blew the guts out of it, which was very sad. So I had to get another one. So more delays and in the meantime, I became also a bit lethargic in actually doing this. I was also waiting several weeks in between the end of November and beginning of January to get the new pulley for this section over here. But anyway, you can see that I now have it all wired up with the new AM FM module, the amplifier over here and connected between the two with this audio lead conveniently the right length with two molded plugs, audio plugs on it. And then I have the pulley system working very nicely. This means that the original, as I mentioned before, the original drive of the antique radio now drives the new potentiometer, which selects the various AM, FM stations on this module. So, that is working pretty well now at this stage. And I'll just spin it around here to show you the other side. And I'll just change the camera angle a little bit. So you can now see, see that this is the uh, tuning potentiometer that's driven mechanically by the original tuning knob down here that I used to use to tune the original radio. And the other thing to show you is uh, I've connected the leads from some of the modules up to this block connector here uh, in the case of the DC voltage for the radio. And I have a little LED indicator which again comes from the radio module. And this is the tuning indicator. And I'd probably bring this out to the front. I may change it from a red one to a green one and bring it out behind what will be the dial on the original radio tuning capacitor. So at this stage, I'm going to end this section of the project. The radio is working really nicely and it tunes perfectly with the old tuning system here, as you can see me tuning and the belt driving the pot. This is how I'm going to finish up here. The next section, which I hope will be the final one, in fact, it will be the final one, will be mounting this plate which goes onto the front here, which had the original dial drive bulbs. Although I think I'm going to change the dial drive bulbs to LEDs and surround the dial to give it a more even illumination and link up the original mechanical arrangement between this metal plate here 
and the needle that turned 180 degrees on the old dial to make it look a little bit more authentic even though the guts of this radio is going to be totally modern. So I hope you'll join me in the next episode. It should be an awful lot shorter than this one when I get the chassis back into the cabinet, uh, mess about with the controls here because the shafts on the new pots that I've and switches that I've mounted here are not the same length as the original ones, so they're not going to project enough through the cabinet. So I'm going to have to think of some way of extending them. I'm not quite sure at this stage how that's going to work. But anyway, in the meantime, if you have been watching this, thank you and I hope you'll join me in the next episode.